You are watching Tech Confessions. Created by Amy Lewis and brought to you by VMware. So welcome to the show, William. Thanks for having me. Um, so we're here to get your tech confession. When did you change from thinking solely about hardware to thinking about more in software terms? But I think of you as such a software-defined <laughs> person. Right. <laughs> D was that just like the way it was all the time? Um, well, one day I was eating Cheerios and Frosted Flakes. No, um, <laughs> it, I think it kind of started, you know, after college, after I graduated, you know, I have a computer science degree. I, I don't really consider myself a developer. It's just not what I wanted to do, but I knew that I wanted to do kind of administration work. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of helping our university uh, virtualize some of the servers that they had. You know, they had the traditional classic problem, which is I have a physical server for every application. And I learned about VMware at that time. And right before I graduated, we kind of did a project to help them virtualize. But when I uh, joined the company after college, they had an, an issue where when an ESXi host would actually go offline, uh, for whatever reason, hardware failures, um, they would have somebody run to the data center and figure out which server it was. And then they had to figure out which virtual machines were restarted and then figure out uh, which of the applications were impacted. And obviously these are uh, many custom applications off the cuts and so you had a number of applications for VMs. So you can imagine a host you know, with 20, 30, 50 VMs, you're having to query a lot of this information. And then once they knew this information, they then had to manually go through our uh, CMDB and look for the uh, system admins and the app admins, find their email addresses, craft custom oh emails boy. to them <laughs> and figure out like, hey, this application went down. Oh, by the way, you might want to wake up and check on this application. It may not be working. Oh my gosh. And so when I came on board, I, you know, I was still a kind of quote unquote new grad. And so they didn't want to give me access to, to the VMware environment and start messing around. But they're like, we did have this particular problem. And so having the computer science degree, having that kind of semi-development background at the time, because that's kind of what I've been taught at school, you know, could you help us find a solution? And I knew VMware pretty well, um, but didn't really know about how to kind of find this information and you know, started exploring using a little bit of Java, but what I ended up doing was writing a, a little script that would automatically detect you know, when vSphere HA took over and said this host failed, identify all those virtual machines, found the applications that they were running, because we had a CMDB that associated that um, linking together, and then look for the contact information, which was also in our CMDB, naturally. And then I dynamically generated this Excel uh, report that said these are the impact applications, generate the email, sent that all out, and so that nobody needs to actually wake up and go to the data center and kind of do all this manual task. And so I kind of felt like that was kind of the, the first moment of sort of like the power of software, power of uh, you know just not having to do things manually and just kind of, yeah. Oh, wh I cannot imagine the kind of hero you were in that <laughs> environment just to solve that problem. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and, and also sort of like you said, to get the software, to make the software work harder. Right. So fast forward, um, can you <laughs> believe where we've come from, from that place to, did that just sort of spark that for you? And then I know you often, uh, you're compelled to share it with other people. You're one of those folks, you're a, a well-known blogger. Um, what do you get out of that, of helping other people kind of have that moment of there's an easier way? Right. Yeah, I mean, I really like uh, you know solving hard problems and all that, but like more importantly, I feel that you know we've all gone through these issues. You know, we've all solved a particular problem. We spent a lot of time researching it, and if I can share that with other people and allow them to either learn from my mistakes uh, or benefit from some of the learnings myself and all that, that just you know we just kind of help improve everybody's lives and all that. And so, as I was doing this administration a number of years before I joined VMware, I said, hey, if I've solved this problem, I'm sure somebody else has the exact same problem and is searching around, and they may not have the benefits of the timing, right? Uh, and so I felt that it was really cool to be able to share these solutions, and I just started kind of posting samples on the community. Uh, and later on, it was really you know people like Duncan Epping, Scott Lowe, that said, hey, you're doing some really great work. Why don't you consider putting a blog together so that people can actually find your content and make it easier? And so it, it just kind of came natural to me that I just want to share, and that also allowed me to grow myself because I'm writing about the content. Uh, it made me think about like, hey, do I really know about the content? And it allowed for feedback. And oftentimes I've also learned a lot from uh, people who've left comments, who recontributed code. So it's a really nice community. And I feel like VMware has a really unique community that's really different than anything that exists out there. And it's a very collaborative nature. Um, and so yeah, I've, I've always kind of done that kind of throughout my life. And so it just kind of translated to kind of what I've done as, as a day job basically. Well, do you have a favorite moment where you took somebody from, again, that more hardware focused world and sort of gave them the light bulb moment by virtue? Do you? Uh, 
What's I'm sure you've got a million of them, <laughs> but what's a favorite moment? You saw the light bulb come on right. over your head. Um, we had one where we were working with some of our data center engineers and stuff, and they were doing a lot of these manual tests by hand, you know, putting the servers in there, and then they have to do all these validations, saying, do they have the right drive information, manually looking at the MAC address of the servers, and they're just writing this down on a piece of paper, and then they're then scanning into a scanner, which oh, man. I don't even know if there's such <laughs> things anymore. Everybody's using their phones, right? And then they're emailing it to us, and they're like, oh, here's all the MAC addresses so that you can associate them with DNS and all that, and I'm like, first off, that's a lot of work for me. I got to now take these spreadsheets and like, what is this? And convert them. And I had mentioned to them, I was like, hey, you know, some of these servers actually have APIs. We can actually dynamically query for some of this information, uh, especially for some of the gear that we were using. You can actually proactively find out the MAC address before you even ship the hardware, oh, which wow. like blew his mind. <laughs> and he's like, wow, we can do that? I was like, yeah, we can actually get all this information before you even power up the server. And take that information, put it in whatever format we needed it, and then that can actually be digitized and sent over, and then we can now be much more efficient because that means we can start provisioning the infrastructure so that it's ready when the hardware arrives. And so now he's not having to manually open up the console, read out the MAC addresses sometimes because he might have made a mistake. And then I was like, hey, you got to go to the data center, power on the server, go into the BIOS, and then read these little MAC addresses. And he's like, this just like blew his mind. And it allowed them to be a lot more efficient, and that just gave them a lot of free time to then work on other things. And I think that's really the power of automation, APIs, and software is that it's not taking away jobs, it's actually giving you back time that you can then focus on other things altogether and stuff. So that's that's really been the, the most powerful message that you know myself and others have been trying to drive, you know, as we talk about automation and getting admins like out of, you know, stop being scared of APIs and automation, that it's something that's gonna really help them. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, you know, that's one of my favorite stories that I like to tell. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So if you have a moment that you can look at and say, I got time back because software gave me this time back, what's a project that you're really proud of that's something you've done because hmm. the time you got back? Something you've uh, been working on recently or? Recently, um, yeah, so um, one, yeah, one recent one was uh, working on the hackathon gear. Uh, we, we did the hackathon, this is our second year doing it, so last year was really our first. At and VMworld. At VMworld, and it was, um, it was something that we weren't sure of. It kind of came in last minutes. Uh, generally good ideas come in the last minutes. <laughs> um, and I had to build these servers. So it's like software defined APIs and all of a sudden it's like, crap, I got to put memory sticks and all this kind of stuff in there. And then we had to provision the system. And although I did a lot of the tasks that are automated, there's still some things I had to do manual last year. And I was like, man, I have to do this again for VMworld Europe. This was for VMworld US. And I said, wouldn't it be cool if I can just take a USB key put all the software in there, just plug it in, and the only manual task that I need to do is just press power and just walk away. And when I come back, I want my SDDC completely provisioned. And I jokingly said that to Alan Renouf, thinking like, oh yeah, that'd be kind of cool. And then after I started thinking about it, I was like, you know, that would be really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I started tinkering around as, as I normally do, a um, little bit of late nights. And uh, a couple weeks later, I actually built a solution. And so for the Europe um, hackathon, last year, we, that's exactly what I did. We provisioned these USB keys, plugged it into the Intel Nooks, powered them on, so we had seven of them that had to build. I didn't want to build any of them at, at all. Um, had better things to do. And um, just pressed power on and walked away. And that saved just a ton of time because, again, automation, just that consistency, but it allowed me to take some time away from worrying about this hackathon, which is kind of last minute, which itself was crazy, but uh, start focusing on other things like, is my session prepared? Are my decks done? You know, the other more important things of the, of the session and all that. And so that was something recent. Um, that was a little jive between hardware and software. I love it. And I love, uh, I hope our listeners get from that story, you know, just look look to pro solve problems. And right. then if you don't quite know how yourself, maybe look yeah. around, Frosted Flakes, Cocoa Pebbles, and all that good combination <laughs> together. Gets the mind going and all that. Yeah, and a little bit of beer as well, too. So I'm going to try that, maybe yeah. without the beer. Come on. Don't knock it till you try it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Thanks William. Thanks for having us. <laughs> and when you're ready to make your tech confession, please join us at techconfessionsthe show dot com.